just had a cracking bite on the uh, on the bigger rod. You can see this different angle. Yeah, there it goes. The bite was a lot better than that. I just turned round and it pulled down. There's no weed about, which is excellent. Uh, there's no current to talk about for dragging the leads. I'm going to get this in, just to see. It's a first cast, so... Two flatties, first cast. Brilliant, we'll get these unhooked. So guys, <laughs> excellent start again. Uh, two fish this time. Don't think the rods the rod was even out ten minutes. And I've got two little flounders. Two little flounders on the same rod. One was on the plain mackerel strip, one was on the mackerel and a black lug. I've got them resting in the bucket just now.
quite strong. I'll give them another five minutes or something in the bucket. After my last video, I had a few questions, particularly on Facebook, of uh, why I bother resting the fish in the bucket. Now, it's purely for fish welfare reasons. Also, it helps to wash your hands, etc. But purely uh, rest them in the bucket for fish welfare. Let them rest up, make sure they're strong enough to be released. In the past, when I've done beach fishing, even though I've improved my unhooking technique, I still like to rest them in the bucket. You've maybe noticed it yourself, guys, if you've been fishing for flatties, you know, and especially for you beginners, that flatfish in particular, flounders, dabs, even if you're using quite big hooks, they can take the bait or the hook right down their throat and they, they, be, uh, they end up being deep hooked. Well, obviously, it doesn't matter how careful you are sometimes, uh, sometimes you can damage the fish by unhooking, even though, you know, people have got their own sort of tried and tested ways and they think it's okay. But all you need to do is, to damage the fish, is just nick the gills slightly and uh, you know basically the fish will bleed to death so what i do is i make sure they're rested up that they're strong and then i'll release them because i've been fishing in the past and uh, unhooked them threw them back in the sea straight away and maybe an hour or so into your session you see the fish getting washed up on the shore so if it looks like they're going to die or they may be dying in the bucket especially if they've got a gill bleed if you've nicked one of the gill rakers or something like that then, you know, rather than throw them away to be wasted uh, for the seagulls to eat, I'll, I'll take them home and I'll do something with them. But the main reason for the bucket is fish welfare, guys. And obviously, you know, it takes a much, a much better picture when there's no rubbish on the fish, no sand. Uh, but, you know, that's the last reason that I've got the bucket. Just, obviously, because I'm fishing for flat flatfish predominantly and I know I'm going to get flatfish today. Uh, I've got a small bucket, it's big enough for the flatfish, even some of the 35 centimetre ones that I got last time. You know, it's plenty big enough and what I'm going to do, like I say, five minutes time, I'll release them if they're strong enough and uh, yeah, I'll be happy and they'll be happy. <laughs> I think I've got a bites in the little rod. That what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to just cast that out again. Now, it's been less than 20 minutes since both rods have been out and there's no, well what I've noticed so far anyway, just bringing that other one in with the fish on it and this one, there's no crabs whatsoever. So I'm going to cycle the baits probably every 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Obviously if the crabs come on and start moolering the bait then I'll change them maybe cycle maybe 25 minutes or 20 minutes but I'll get this one back out short cast probably 40 yards
Yeah, last time I was here, if you haven't seen it guys, I had one fish in first cast, first 20 minutes, and they went really quiet for the next three, three hours or so. One of the reasons for that is I was actually casting too far. Even though I didn't think I was casting that far, I was doing maybe 70 or 80 yards. And then I dropped the small rod to about 40 yards and I was getting smashed by fish all the time. Uh, obviously on an incoming tide, the flounder or flatfish will follow the tide in. And you know, 70, 80 yards was far too far. So after the last time I dropped them short, the big rod at the minute, I'm maybe fishing about 60 yards at the minute because you never know, there may be a bass in the area and uh, the little rod again, as you saw there, maybe about 40 yard cast. Stay tuned guys. Okay guys, I'm just going to uh, quickly go over my baits I've got today. I've got some uh, frozen black Welsh. These are like rocking horse poo at the minute to get a hold of in Scotland, uh, probably because Wales is in lockdown with Covid. Frozen mackerel. Some frozen bluey. Uh, I've got some pre-cut strips of uh, squid. Just to try and change it up a bit. I've already got some pre-cut strips of mackerel as well. And uh, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll mix and match these. Bit of black, bit of, bit of uh, mackerel, which was the predominant bait last session I had here. Even though I did catch some on plain mackerel strip as well. Oh yeah, I just want to say, one of the main reasons I'm actually back at the same venue is even though I did have a good stamp of uh, flounder the last time, I did have some cracking bites that I missed. Now, it's either sea bass or sea trout. You never know guys, it may even be turbot. I've never caught a turbot before and I've tried to target them as well uh, in the past, especially further up the coast to Arbroath on Elliot Beach. Uh, you do get them. Not great size, but I just like to catch one. I think they're a stunning looking fish. And you know, just to get my sort of, uh, <laughs> well, it will be my PB, it'll be my first. Any size will be my, my PB. So yeah, I'm hoping that I'm going to mix and match my hooks up a bit because I did miss the bites. Yeah, I'll see how it goes. And I'm going to try a different cocktails of bait. So I'll try like the uh, black lug, bluey, black lug and squid. Uh, and I've even got some, I forgot about these actually. As does uh, frozen king prawns, the raw king prawn. Uh, I've caught cod with them in the past on their own. Uh, but I think just having a, a maybe a, a king prawn and black lug, I think that'll be successful. But guys, you know how it is. If the fish are on and the fish are eating and feeding, they'll pretty much take anything. So yeah, stay tuned guys. So guys, just a little update. Uh, tide's just turned. Uh, it's been about an hour since I started. Obviously I had the first two fish uh, within 10 minutes really. Had another couple of bites. Never came or nothing. There's another couple of anglers just turned up, which is really good to see because I didn't see one angler on the whole beach the last time. Uh, so yeah, and they've not had anything either. They've been fishing for about half an hour. Uh, but let's see, the tide's just turned, so hopefully the fish will start coming on. Uh, I can't really give you a look around today because there's not much to see with this. Uh, sea mist that's coming in. I can only really see a couple of hundred yards to the back of the beach. I can just make out the sand dunes in the back. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a little screenshot up on uh, Google Maps so you can just have a, another look at the area if you didn't see the last video. And uh, yeah, hopefully it starts picking up again. 
which I think it should. Uh, you know, the fish are here. I've obviously had a couple now, so put fresh base out. Not fishing many grip leads again today. The tide's not running fast. It's neat tides as well today, so quite short tides. And they're not, not running with any strain. Stay tuned. Flatty guys, baby one, get this in the bucket. That was on the uh, clean macro strip. That one shouldn't need much resting up, it wasn't deep hooked. Yeah, I'll get that one back in. It's really strong. Just a tiny one. Three fish though, within a couple of hours. Quite happy with that. No big ones yet though. Uh, one of the other anglers, they've had uh, a couple between them. Uh, one looked not too bad actually, flounder. Good. Well, guys, it's been. Uh, it's been a not too bad day, five fish in total, and nothing big, which I'm really surprised about because the stamp of fish I had here the last time were really quite good. Thought it would have been better today, uh, on arrival, uh, a little bit of surf, and I thought the fish would have pushed in, but 
it's not been that good at all. Five fish is better than nothing. I've had worse. I've had nothing at all. Blank. But yeah, you know, it's a day out and it's been almost well, it's been about four weeks I think since my last session. If you like the video guys, uh, give a thumbs up and if you want to see more, uh, if you have not already subscribed then please subscribe. Just want to say a big thank you to all you guys that have subscribed and following me. I'll try and get out as much as I can. I was nearly out last week but it was blowing an absolute hoolie in Scotland. In fact, it's been, the weather's been terrible for the last two or three weeks. If it's not torrential rain, it's, uh, it's really blowing a hoolie. Yeah, so, until the next time guys, once again thanks very much for watching, stay safe and see you next time.